Good afternoon. The next item of business this afternoon is consideration of business motion 10208 in the name of Joe Fitzpatrick on behalf of the Bureau setting out a timetable for the Domestic Abuse Scotland Bill at stage three. I would ask any member who wishes to speak against this motion to press their request to speak button now and I call on Joe Fitzpatrick to move motion 10208. Thank you very much. No one's asked to speak against the motion. The question is that motion 10208 be agreed. Are we all agreed? We are agreed. Now, the next item of business is a statement by Shirley Ann Somerville on supporting people to study in Scotland. And the Minister will take questions at the end. If anybody wishes to ask a question, I would encourage uh, them to press their request to speak button now. And I call on Shirley Ann Somerville. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Scotland is an outward looking nation, and this government remains absolutely committed to our country continuing to be an open, welcoming and diverse nation. A key driver of that is the ethos and culture of our colleges and universities, an ethos which supports the cross-cultural exchange of ideas and opinions, knowledge and research, new social activities and greater understanding. At the same time, the world-class reputation of our higher education sector in particular ensures that we remain a country where people want to come and work in our universities and also to study here. A diverse student population made up from people from Scotland, from the other countries in the UK, from across the EU and from other parts of the world help to make that ethos a reality. The recognised benefits of EU and international students include an enriched learning experience and an international outlook amongst home students and graduates and the development of an international network of alumni. At university, 22% of enrolments are from EU and non-EU international students. They are and will remain an integral and valued part of our universities and indeed our <coughs> colleges too. Presiding officer, there can be no doubt of the threat posed by even the talk of a Brexit which results in the loss of freedom of movement. The latest UCAS figures show a 10% reduction in acceptances from EU students to Scottish universities. The continued lack of clarity from the UK government, particularly on freedom of movement and the immigration status of students, is frankly unacceptable. It ignores that every potential student, and indeed those currently studying here in Scotland, is an individual with costs, commitment, family, lives, and indeed alternatives available to them. So since the EU referendum, we have been clear that we want prospective students from the EU to continue to see Scotland as a place that they wish to study, a place they wish to live, and a place that they can call home. Previously, we have confirmed that EU students starting their studies in the 2017-18 academic year and in the 2018-19 academic year will have the cost of their tuition fees met by the Scottish Government for the duration of their studies. Today, President Officer, I can announce that we will now extend that commitment to the 2019-20 cohort. This means that all eligible non-UK EU citizens who come to Scotland to study for an undergraduate higher education qualification in 2019-20 will benefit from free tuition. This will provide confidence for prospective EU students considering coming to study in Scotland, as well as the clarity that our institutions require in order to plan for that academic year. We are the first government in the UK to make that commitment and we do so to send a strong message to current and prospective students that you are welcome here. We will also continue to press the UK government to clarify its position on Erasmus Plus after the UK's withdrawal from the EU. Since 2014, more than 15,000 people have been involved in nearly 500, 500 Erasmus Plus projects across Scotland. The programme is evolving to include vocational education and training, adult education, schools education and youth work. And we want to continue participating in Erasmus Plus and successor programmes, ensuring that people from Scotland continue to have the valuable opportunity to experience living, studying and volunteering overseas and welcoming others from across the EU to come here to Scotland. It's also important for us to continue to welcome people from other countries to study in Scotland too. This government supports our higher education sector's efforts to promote Scotland as a destination to study to the wider world. Scotland's Saltire scholarships were first introduced in 2009, open to international students from selected countries outside the EU. They have increased in popularity and reputation over the years. And indeed, competition for the scholarship has grown with almost 4,000 applications last year. From surveying these students, we know that the Saltire scholarships have confirmed people's views of Scotland. 
that we are a welcome and open and an attractive place to visit and study. But discussions with previous participants and with the institutions have now led to another evolution of the programme with a stronger focus on developing a strong network of scholars and alumni to promote Scotland and its education system overseas. This is all the more necessary in light of the continued uncertainty generated by the UK government to both EU and international students. So for 2018-19 and beyond, <clears throat> 50 solitaire scholars will be selected from academically gifted applicants from the Scottish Government's priority countries of Canada, China, India, Pakistan and the US. They will study in areas such as science and technology, medicine and healthcare, the creative industries, renewable energy, adding value to priority issues including STEM, digital skills, public services and the low-carbon economy. We'll also ensure that the new solitaire scholars do engage with our Global Scots programme. They will meet with a range of industry leaders while studying here and will be in a position to share that experience with others wherever their future may take them. In return, we'll double the value of the current scholarship from four to eight thousand pounds, an offer made possible by the continuing partnership funding and support from universities. We'll also continue to support a range of schemes offering short-term opportunities for international students to come to our colleges and universities and indeed for Scottish students to spend time overseas. These include funding Scotland's participation in the Generation UK China Exchange Programme, the UK India Education and Research Initiative, the UK US Fulbright Commission, and the International Association for the Exchange of Students for Technical Experience. These programmes help to draw talented people from around the world to live and study in Scotland. It's vital for the health of our economy and society that we're able to retain some of these talented people in Scotland and to allow them to work here. The UK's current post-study work offer is not adequate for Scotland and the Home Office's Tier 4 pilot falls far short of the kind of post-study work route that Scotland needs. We will continue to press the UK Government to respect the cross-party consensus that exists in this Parliament and reinstate the post-study work visa at the earliest opportunity. Presiding Officer, it's also important for us to offer assistance to those international students who are in need of our support the most. Already this government supports students who have settled here from Iraq, having helped the armed forces as locally employed staff interpreters. Home office rules provide them with indefinite leave to remain and our regulations on financial support ensure that they could afford to study for qualifications which might help them succeed in their new lives here. It's therefore inexplicable that the same opportunity to remain here indefinitely was denied to Afghan interpreters who undertook similar work. It's the fact that Afghan nationals, who were previously locally employed staff, are here only on a five years leave rather than indefinite leave to remain, which has prevented them from being eligible for support to go to university without further adjustment to our schemes and arrangements for financial support. That's not fair and equitable, and today, President Officer, I'm putting that right. Action will be taken to open up student support to Afghan interpreters so that, that eligible Afghan students can apply for tuition and living cost support so that they can undertake courses of further and higher education at our colleges and universities. This recognises the contribution they have made in their service to the UK and to armed forces deployed to Afghanistan from communities all around Scotland and also opens up opportunities for them to continue their education to provide them with the qualifications and skills they need to move on in life. Presiding officer, the risks from leaving the EU are increasingly significant and becoming more real. We should not forget that people in Scotland voted decisively to remain in the EU. All the available information and analysis shows that doing so remains the best option for Scotland and indeed the UK as a whole. But we must prepare for an outcome that none of us want. In doing so, we must not allow our distinct voice, our international reputation, our excellence in education to diminish. Whatever the outcome of the Brexit negotiations, we must send a clear signal not only to people who are already studying here, but also potential students from the EU and further afield. We must continue to provide opportunities for our own students so that they might benefit from the experience of studying and living abroad. Presiding officer, by our words and by our actions, we can show the world that we remain an open nation which values diversity and that we are a welcoming country. Indeed, as the University Scotland campaign summed up so succinctly, Scotland welcomes the world. Thank you, Minister. And we'll now take questions on the Minister's statement. We'll be ar around 20 minutes for questions. Liz Smith. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I thank the Minister for uh, the prior sight of the statement? 
And can I also welcome the early confirmation of the financial status of EU students at Scottish Universities for academic year 2019-20. Confirmation that I know will be welcomed by the universities as they plan ahead. And can I also associate myself with the remarks that the Minister made in her statement that it is important to send out a strong message to current and prospective students that Scotland is a good place to be. I think all MSPs are aware of the outstanding contribution that EU students and staff make to our universities, often at the cutting edge of research and development, and which are so important to the future of the economy. Could I ask the Minister two questions? Firstly, what discussions is the Scottish Government having with University Scotland and with Derek Mackay's office about the long-term sustainability of higher education funding in Scotland, given the warnings that were issued to the Scottish Government by Audit Scotland in its most recent report? And also, what actions is it taking to expand the bursary support for poorer students, which despite some modest improvements in the last two years, still lags behind other parts of the UK? Minister. Well, I um, uh, welcome Liz Smith's uh, remarks and, and would associate myself with uh, the, the addition that she put in about uh, EU staff and indeed our, our international staff, uh, uh, the academics that we have here um, from across the world are one of the reasons why our universities um, are world renowned and we should be equally proud um, of every single one of them. As Liz Smith will be well aware, um, the budget for the higher education um, sector, the overall investment in that, um, increased by 1.9% in real terms um, for next year. So despite the difficult financial um, settlement that this Scottish Government um, had to deal with, we have um, provided a real terms increase for that, uh, for that sector ongoing. And indeed, that uh, settlement has been welcomed by University Scotland when Mr um, Mackay um, uh, produced the draft budget. So we'll take very seriously um, the, the requirements um, of the sector and I believe we're delivering that by ensuring that we're providing over a billion pounds a year in public funding to higher education. Um, she also talks about the importance of supporting those um, poorer students um, who require um, support. I would point out to her that um, we obviously have had the, the independent um, review of student support um, which uh, recently uh, provided a number of recommendations to the government which um, I will report on due, on due course. Um, some of them were, were very radical, particularly where it involved um, parts of the higher and particularly further education sector um, that uh, deal with social security and the impact any change we would make um, on uh, therefore a student's ability to receive social security benefits. That's why some of the, the aspects which they're um, asking us to look at um, will require us to work with the UK government um, to, to see what the implications of that will be. But I will report back to Parliament in due course. But she can be assured that I've asked my officials um, to ensure that everything we were doing around that um, is based on um, ensuring that those, from, uh, those uh, students who perhaps find it most difficult because of their financial situation to go to university are at the forefront of our thoughts on that um, and we will base our deliberations on them. Ian Gray. Mm. Uh, thank you, President Officer, and thanks to Minister uh, for early sight of her statement. I think that uh, all the measures contained in the statement uh, are uh, welcome as far as we are concerned and indeed, um, as Liz Smith said, particularly perhaps the very early indication uh, of support for EU students in academic year 2019-20 uh, in good time for application because on one previous occasion uh, that did not of course happen and it did cause uh, difficulty for both universities and potential students. It does mean that in this case EU, student, uh, EU citizens uh, thinking of applying uh, to study in Scotland in that academic year will know what support will be available to them and that is important. But it is the case, uh, as was rather implied by the Minister's previous answer, that Scottish domiciled people thinking of uh, applying to study uh, in university or in college beginning next year do not know what support for living will be available for them because the Scottish Government have not yet responded to that review of support for students. That can't be right. Uh, 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 and will the Minister accept that simply to say she will respond in due course. It's not really good enough. And will she tell us when she intends to respond and tell us what support will be available in 2019-20? Minister. 
Well, with, with the greatest respect to, to Ian Gray, they do know because it's on the, the students' advisory um, website. They know exactly what they will be receiving um, for, their, for their student support because the system is in place just now. So this is not a mystery to anyone that's looking at applying and indeed officials from SAS are going around the country, going into schools and talking exactly about what's available to them. What we are ensuring that we will do is look at the, the longer term challenges. Now, if Ian Gray thinks that I should take the review of student support and I should immediately accept it, and then once we actually have discussions with the DWP, we find out that when I provide more money through an, an FE budget, that they'll actually then use their social security benefits. I think Ian Gray would rightly think that was a bit misinformed. So I will take my time to ensure that my officials have due time to discuss with the DWP that I can discuss with ministers down south to ensure that any changes that we make won't then actually then be a disincentive to study. So while Ian Gray might want us to rush ahead, we'll continue to work with stakeholders, we'll continue to work with the NUS to ensure we look very, very seriously at every single piece of evidence that they produced and indeed rise to the challenge that the review gave us. James Dornan to be followed by Oliver Mundell. James Dornan. Thank you, President Officer. Uh, and can I thank the Minister for that uh, very positive statement? And I'm sure that many people will have been glad to hear uh, the words that she said. Can the Minister confirm to me, though, that she will also press the UK Government to follow her example on EU tuition fees, given that the risks associated with Brexit around these students and clarity for our institutions are entirely of the Tories' own making? Minister. Well, James Dornan raises a, a very important point about the signals which this government has given in the announcements that we are making today, but also the importance of the signals that you need to come from the UK government. As I said during my statement, we are the, the first government within uh, the UK uh, to discuss what's happening with the 1920 students. The deadline and, um, is very, very important, and the signals coming from the UK government, and indeed the actions of the UK government, are also important, because those entering... Um, a, a degree for four years in academic year 1920 will graduate in 2023. So while the Tories argue amongst themselves what transition means, these students will have actually left university way after the transition period. So they don't need to just know what's happening during transition, they need to know what's happening after transition. So while we've taken the steps today to set our, out our positive case for why students should come here, I really do encourage the UK government to both decide what transition means um, in general, but what it means for students, and importantly, what it means afterwards to ensure that uh, we have freedom of movement and encourage our students to stay here, not just for their course, but after that too. Oliver Mundell to be followed by Jenny Gilruth. Oliver Mundell. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I join with uh, colleagues in welcoming the clarity that today's statement brings? However, with the well-documented pressure on funded places here in Scotland and a number of Scottish young people missing out on their preferred university choice, I wondered if the Minister could explain what today's statement will mean for them. Minister. Well, I'm sure Oliver Mundell is aware that we actually have a record number of Scottish applicants being accepted to university in 2017, an increase of 3%. We also have a record number of 18-year-olds from the most deprived communities um, going to university as well. So we are seeing um, encouraging signs of them. Um, uh, widening access within our system. Uh, this doesn't go uh, far enough um, as far as I'm concerned and that's why the government continues to encourage universities uh, to pick up the pace of change when it comes to widening access. But this is, government is delivering not just for EU students but also for our Scottish domicile students as well. Jenny Gilruth to be followed by Mary Fee. Uh, thank you. I remind members I'm the PLO to the Education Secretary. Can the Minister outline what discussions she has had with the UK Government regarding the future of the Erasmus Plus programme after the UK's withdrawal from the EU and how she plans to continue to put pressure on them to ensure that these vital international exchanges are not lost thanks to the reckless actions of the UK Tory Government? Minister. 
Well, as I mentioned in my statement, Erasmus Plus is an exceptionally important uh, programme, not just for our universities, uh, but also for uh, those within uh, youth groups, uh, within schools, within adult education that are also um, seeing the benefit of Erasmus Plus. Indeed, it's probably more valuable for some of those individuals who might not have the opportunity to have international mobility if it wasn't for the schemes for Erasmus Plus. We hear warm words around the importance of Erasmus Plus coming from the UK government, but until we have any clarity around freedom of movement, until we have any clarity about uh, what will be happening to our citizens and those from across Europe and how they will be encouraged still to come to live and to work here, those doubts are still being felt by individuals who will make decisions about whether they will come to study here or go to study elsewhere. So I'll continue to raise my concerns as with other ministers eh, to the UK government that we need an early sign of um, a, a definitive policy from them. And I'll be raising this issue with the newly appointed UK Minister for Higher Education um, when we meet. Mary Feed, followed by Ross Greer. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I welcome today's announcement by the Minister to support Afghan interpreters who risk life to assist our armed forces in their home country to study in Scotland. Can the Minister give us any indication of how many Afghan students the extension of support will apply to, what analysis has been done on the costs, and what educational and financial assistance will be provided to the families of Afghan interpreters who were born out with Scotland? Minister. Uh, can I, 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 I thank the member for the, the encouragement for the change that, that we've made. I mean, this is a, an issue which um, is all about fairness within our education system and the ability for Afghan interpreters to have uh, the chance to go to, to colleges and um, to, to universities. It is important to, to um, ensure that um, we support those individuals during that process. Um, COSLA has um, shown that there are currently 313 Afghan nationals um, under the scheme living in five local authority areas in Scotland, with a potentially a further cohort um, who will be settled in Glasgow and Inverclyde local authority areas. Uh, so that's a, a, a rough approximation of the numbers of individuals we're talking about. The difference, of course, it will make to um, each individual's life um, is in course um, incalculable and I will be delighted um, if some of um, the Afghan nationals um, that I've, I've talked about in that 313 um, will be able to take part in our college and university courses uh, and take a, a, a full um, a advantage of campus life. Ross Greer to be followed by Tavish Scott. Ross Greer. Thank you. Like colleagues, I welcome the Scottish Government's continued support for the Erasmus Plus programme. As already been mentioned, it's a huge benefit to young people in Scotland, not just university students, but young people with, from a variety of backgrounds across all of Scotland. Could I ask the Minister if the Government is exploring options for continued Scottish participation in Erasmus Plus in some way, in the absence of any agreed UK-wide participation post-Brexit? And I accept, of course, that this would depend very much on the wider terms of the Brexit settlement. Minister. Well, I think uh, the, the last point that, that Mr um, Greer made is, is the important one. We will, of course, do everything um, as a, the Scottish Government um, and with stakeholders in Scotland um, to work our way through um, what can be done here, what can be done within the powers of the Scottish Parliament, what works best um, for Scotland would be, of course, to continue within Erasmus+. Plus. Um, it's uh, the simplest um, and the most obvious answer to that. All of this, however, depends on freedom of movement. All of this depends on many aspects which are much, much wider than education. And I think in many ways that's what's hindering progress because we can all agree, and I, to be fair to um, the, the, my um, a counterpart in the UK to, uh, prior to the latest reshuffle, Joe Johnson, I think he understood the importance of Erasmus Plus too. When you get into the wider um, morass of, of uh, Tory government policies on freedom of movement and welcoming um, students to come here, I think he was prevented in doing what he wanted to do on, on that. Uh, but I would hope that we would be able to, to uh, get some movement around freedom of movement and encouraging um, students to come here, whether it's for Erasmus Plus or for an entire degree. Tavis Scott, 
be followed by Sandra Boyd. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I agree with the Government's proposals to support students from neighbouring EU countries in the 1920 uh, academic year and for their period of study? Would you be able to set out the likely cost of that proposal given the previous and current financial uh, years? And finally, would she agree that it would be important to take students out of the, e the UK immigration figures because, the, they should, because they're part of our future and indeed Europe's future and the last thing that they should be, do, be part of is a political battle over Brexit? Minister. Um, well, of course, as, as Tavish Scott will be um, well aware, the um, number of um, funded places within um, Scotland um, is, is determined, and that allows Scottish domiciled and um, um, EU students um, to, to, to get their places from that. So the, the figures um, of, of how much will be cost will be based on the number of the funded places um, every year. So it is very important that we encourage um, the Scottish domicile students um, to um, continue to apply to uh, university, but also to continue to encourage um, EU nationals not just to apply, but to, to take up their place um, within our universities. And it's, it's exceptionally important that we continue um, that work because we have seen, um, as, I, as I said in my statement, um, an unfortunate decrease in the um, number of applications taken up by EU nationals. Sandra White to be followed by Jamie Halcrow Johnson. Thank you very much, President Officer. I very much welcome the announcement by the Minister in particular about the Afghan interpreters, an area which I have worked uh, with Afghans in my constituency. And I must thank Asif and others uh, for their help in regards to enduring justice uh, for them as well. Uh, these people have came over, they helped our armed forces and yet were denied uh, the right to come here and learn. Can the Minister clarify for me when she intends to lay the legislation which will enable uh, the Afghans to go on to further education and would she agree with me that it really is absurd and unfair and unjust the UK government rules can prevent people like the Afghan interpreters from coming here or anywhere else to further their education? Minister. Hey, well, I will begin by commending the work that, that Sandra White's been doing um, within her constituency and within the city of Glasgow um, with Afghan interpreters um, to ensure that this um, was brought to the attention of myself. Um, and I'm delighted to be able to say that regulations will be laid shortly um, and they will be due to come into place with the start of the 2018-19 academic year. It is very, very important uh, that we do ensure that we pay tribute to the work of Afghan interpreters and the way that we can do that within the powers of this Scottish Parliament is to ensure uh, that we will encourage them to take uh, a full part in life within Scotland and that includes within our further and higher education institutions. Jamie Halker Johnson to be followed by Kate Forbes. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Given the Minister recognises the value of Erasmus Plus and recognising the need for further dialogue on the future of Erasmus Plus, will she uh, at least welcome that, as with her announcements today on tuition costs, the UK Government has provided assurances that successful bids to the Erasmus Plus programme that are submitted while the UK is still a member state will be guaranteed, even if they are not approved or that payments continue after we leave the EU? Minister. Well, I welcome um, any. Um, um, announcements from the UK government that give any clarity whatsoever to what will be happening um, before we leave the EU during the transition period or indeed after the transition period um, but those just simply don't go far enough we spoke in my statement about the fact that these are individuals we're talking about that have to make life choices I talked about the time scale about what those individuals are looking at they will be leaving university at a time where we've left Brexit, where the transition period is long gone, and they have no idea on their immigration status. They don't know whether they'll be welcome to stay here or not. So yes, I would welcome um, any deliberations that the UK government make around Erasmus+, Plus, but they need to give some clarity to what will happen to students, um, and indeed wider EU nationals in Scotland. Until then, it's too little, and I fear it might be too late for some. Kate Forbes, followed by Daniel Johnson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. These moves go a long way in trying to reverse some of the damage inflicted to the Scottish economy by the UK Government's cutting of the post-study work visa. Does the um, Minister think it's absurd that this visa has still not been restored to Scotland? Minister. Well, yes, yes, I do. And uh, this is uh, one of these areas <coughs> where we actually have um, cross-party consensus within this parliament um, on the need for a post-study work visa and, and also the um, importance of ensuring that we um, encourage international students um, to come here. We unfortunately have a position 
where the policy when it comes to um, EU and particularly um, uh, international students is based more on immig immigration ideology rather than evidence. Um, and with my apologies to Tavish Scott, I should have picked up on the second part of his question when he um, talked about um, how um, it's important that we don't include students um, in, um, in immigration. Um, statistics. Now that obviously is a de decision for the UK government um, but it's a decision which needs to be based on evidence and unfortunately uh, we've seen in the past that the restrictions that um, came about that the UK government put on um, international students and the ending of the post-study work visa was based on an inflated estimate of almost 100,000 students supposedly abusing the system each year. And when the UK government actually got around to counting the numbers properly, they found out that fewer than 5,000 students overstayed their visa last year. So these rules are based on ideology um, and not evidence. And it's disappointing that we still read from the Prime Minister, who was, of course, Home Secretary, when um, these discussions um, were being um, um, debated. Uh, her position as, as a Prime Minister is still that international students should be included within immigration status. That, that bears uh, no relation to the evidence involved and I hope this is uh, one thing which the Prime Minister will change her mind on. Uh, that's our 20 minutes but if we be concise I'll get the last two questions in. Daniel Johnson to be followed by Gordon MacDonald. The a doubling of the value of the Saltar scholarships is clearly welcome. However, it would seem to come at the expense of the number. My understanding is that it, the number of scholarships was 100 last year, falling to 50 this year. Could the Minister outline the rationale for this fall? Minister. Well, as I, I said during my statement, one of the, the, um, um, the issues which was brought up when we were discussing with um, previous uh, um, um, scholars and also with the institutions is that we needed to do more to ensure that we built up a meaningful alumni programme at the end of it. So uh, the number of um, 50 allows us to have activities while they're in Scotland that will be large enough uh, to uh, sustain that, that work. Um, so it's based on the fact that we want to do more than just get 100 people here. Uh, we want people to, to come, uh, to be fully immersed in what our universities are all about and indeed the wider industry is all about, and then sustain that relationship once they leave. So um, the, the, the changes to the system have been based on our discussions with institutions um, and indeed with the individuals about what more we could do to support them um, once their studies are finished. And Gordon MacDonald. Uh, Minister, further to your answer to my colleague Kate Forbes regarding the post-study work visa, would you agree with me that the best way to solve issues around this is for immigration to be devolved to this parliament? Briefly, Minister. Well, yes, I would. It's a, a very important um, um, issue that we need to look at. Um, all uh, government ministers will uh, you know, seek to... to to solve a problem when they come up. Unfortunately, um, when it comes to EU and international students and our encouraging of them, we are doing that with one hand tied behind our back. I, I, I spoke previously um, about the restrictions which are being placed on international students um, and also this obsession with the UK government counting international students um, as, as part of the immigration um, figures. It bears no evidence um, to, to actual reality and is also damaging to our economy. Uh, the quicker we can have these powers here in the Scottish Parliament and take the right decisions for um, the economy in Scotland, the better. Can I thank the Minister and members for their contributions? That concludes our statement on supporting students, uh, people to study in Scotland.